The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, the Friday edition. Friday, September the 14th. And uh, thank you, Steve. Two great hours. And, of course, straight off to me, Nico DeHaan. It's all about your health. And then you get, I'm pretty sure I've got the order right, and then you get uh, Daryl, Dave, Ken, and Tom O'Brien is back. So, full house today, great technicians, and a great health hour coming up after me. So, let's go through the business here. When I was talking yesterday, what I said was, the Dow look kind of okay, but the Qs, the NASDAQ Qs were very weak, and technically the Stochastic and MACD were very weak. Well, it is my belief that if the Fed hadn't come in as they did, um, with the, while you know, I was doing the program within half an hour, um, that we probably would have seen a one- to three-day pullback, and it was aborted that pullback by that announcement, and when you think about it, up 207 points, that's not a big deal. We had 250 points just recently. It's just not a big deal. Ha! What is a big deal is that the, there were breakouts. Now, let me explain what that means. And Actually, you know what? Let me just run the numbers. We've got that out the way. I've got quite a chunk to talk about. I will not be here Monday. Um, I will be doing my uh, my opening call. We'll go out to subscribers as usual. Uh, the Dow is up 56 at 13,596. Uh, 13, hit hit 13,600 already. The S&P is up 7.98 at 14.67. The Comp Index is up 30 at 3186. And the Comp Index is when we we're talking. Remember, we we're talking about the uh, the NDX 100 and the Qs. And the, the technicals were really saying that just on the, what I said is the weekly and monthly look fabulous, but the dailies looked like they needed to pull back. So I think we will still get a pullback, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But most importantly, and what I think is quite, quite significant, is that certain things happened. And we had gold power high. Right now, the GLD is at 172.07. There's 174 strong resistance. Uh, silver is uh, up, uh, silver's down 19 cents at 34.56, 59. You've got crude oil up $1.15 at 99.50. You see, we're, we're looking at an inflationary area, areas, and how they show up over the next uh, month, two or three. It's going to be really important. Most importantly, the dollar's down at 78.73. Dollar index is down 53 cents. Bonds are down 4.30 seconds at 145. Uh, bonds are down, uh, let me just check that out, can't be 4 seconds, uh, 4, uh, 2, and 4.30 seconds. I knew there was something missing there. Now, this is very important. So for my subscribers, what we were doing, and fortunately, fortunately, as far as I was concerned, there have been areas that I wanted to be in, we've stayed in, they did fabulously yesterday. We did have a short on the Q. We had bought the QID at the opening yesterday. It took a 2% loss. The, the, the longs more than made up for that, I can assure you. Most importantly, the short that we, the one short we still have was down on the day yesterday and is down again today because I made an absolute point of saying the strong stocks should remain strong and the weak stocks, this is going to be the test, and those weak stocks are shortable. Don't be afraid to short, even in this market. Now, the Fed is they're going to pour money in here. They're going to make sure. They I almost said we're going to make sure that we're going to hold up the market. We want people to feel good in their pockets. That's what we're saying. They want people to feel good enough to go out, buy houses to start the, the, the process that gets the labor force back in, in power. The following. In, 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 in motion, upside motion. Now, let's just do this. Uh, for my subscribers, what I showed is a chart. Now, let me see if this is the one. No, it's right. Yeah. Of the Dow Diamonds. I do this every day, almost every day. The Dow Diamonds, 120-minute chart. And I said, made a peak C 
uh, yesterday, and there should be in the chap wave a leg D to the upside. That's number one. Number two, my vo my chap wave trend gauge, which has a fabulous record of 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 predicting a rally within one to three day, one to two days. It just says a rally. It doesn't say new highs or anything. It just says even if market's going down, expect a very sharp rally, or that there'll be a rug pull to minus uh, early in the morning or early on, and then it'll go positive. There'll be a rally. where A rally, it doesn't talk you about how long the rally holds, but it says if this, if this particular indicator works, it means that the previous day you can start setting up buys that you want to get because even if the futures are up very sharply, pre-market, invariably there's a pullback. Well, there was a very sharp pullback, but the Dow did not go to negative. It almost did, but in the days young, it could still do that. I'm considering, at least for now, it's a miss, one of the few misses in the in the, the Shapwave Trend Index, and we'll deal with that. Now, um, what I'm looking at is, yes, this is, this is what uh, subscribers got this morning, shows the Dow Diamonds needing a leg D, and that would be out, up, above... 135.71. Now, what's important about that, I'm putting it together with a bunch of charts. I also showed them for the last couple of days. I showed them this chart, which was the Dow. I spoke about it on the show the other day. The inversion of what happens in the Chapman Wave arch formation and what you can expect and what happens when there's a break below support. Is there that same, that same, almost that same day or that same bar or the very next bar, there should be a break to the downside and then a reversal back to the upside again to try to test the previous support level. Well, that's at 13,330s. We're at 13,604 right now on the Dow. So that's a very big difference. So I've got to say, ha-ha, be careful because you could get that constant uh, hitting of that Chapman wave inside wedge trend line, you'll see it over here if you're looking at Tiger TV, where it went all the way down. This is the Dow inverted. Sorry, this is the Dow chart inverted. It's upside down, and I'm making it in white so that folks can print it out. I used to not tell them what it is. I used to fool a lot of people because they were looking at the chart, trying to assess what it is. Then I'd say, hey, it's the chart you're looking at every single day that I show you. It's the Dow daily inverted. So what happened is the Dow broke underneath the support now a little bit, and then... Uh, th that's the rule of this particular methodology. So now let's go into this. Now what have we got? We've got, we needed to see a new recovery high for that leg D in the, in the Dow Diamonds. We needed to see some kind of a pullback, some stalling motion that gets the market to pull back, usually to negative, and usually it's in the morning, but it could be later, but I, I usually like to take the indicators if it's going to be in the morning. Um, and the third thing is we've got an inverted pattern that says a breakout. Remember, this is now the, this is the looking at the the break to the upside, except the chart showing it upside down, so it was to the downside. How that's going to unfold? So now let's go to real time. Real time says, "Aha! There's that leg D in the Dow Industrials, and where is it in the Dow Diamonds? Is this the one? Yep, Dow Diamonds. It went to leg D. Leg D at 136.48. MACD is still strong. Stochastic is good. On balance volume is saying, be careful. We're getting to a slightly overbought level, and that overbought level could come in quite soon. The um, VIX, the 120-minute chart, you remember the chart I was talking about, the arch formation? Same thing. Look, there's the cup formation. That's a cup, um, it, that's a cup and, no, there's a cup and ladle breakout because uh, you didn't go above it for the cup and handle. And it's uh, spiked up to a leg D that says be a little bit be careful in the 120 minute chart. And you've got a trough D. On the way down, we talk about troughs in the volatility index, which made you a low today of 13.51. Not See, the Dow's made new highs. S&P's made new highs. Q's have made new highs. Recovery highs. But the VIX hasn't broken below 13.30. So that's saying there's still a little bit of internal strength in the volatility index. It's incredibly uh, bullish if you look at it as what I call the, the selling and buying impact. And this has got tremendous um, buying pressure right now. 
and it could be waning a little bit because you're making a, leg, a trough D. At a trough D, you can often get a bounce. And at a leg D, you can get a pullback. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Now look at the, the channels that we're looking at in the daily charts, and my trend index is over there. Now look at the, this is the inversion of the chart I just showed you of with no names, no nothing, it was just upside down. Look what's happened here. Let me squash it a little bit. You see that? The high, the, that whole area of 13,330s that was resistance, now, in fact, is turned out to be support. And in the cup and ladle breakout pattern says, you can go to a, a peak A, B, C, even a D, and even an E, but you've got to be a little bit careful because when you pull back, if you pull back halfway into the, into the, into the most important candle on the left, that's this candle of yesterday, and in other words, if you, if you break under around about 13,530, be careful because there could be time, maybe not price, but time could involve in some kind of a pullback. And this is what I, I, this is what I write every single day. There it is. And then I still add to it here. Let me show you what I do. I add, whoa, that was a mistake. Get out of that. Close. Oops, close, close. Uh, that one there. And what I do is this is my Dow chart. Uh, if I can find it, there it is. And there it is. And what I, oh, oops, that's the S&P chart. I want to show that as well, so we will, we'll come back to that. Um, why can't I find it? Oh, there it is. So there it is, and there are the comments, even more comments that I add to it. And I explain exactly. And yesterday I said, Fed Schmed, Bonds, Schmons? No, Fed, uh, yeah. Uh, I said most most important was the result of any action and that action was to spike it to the upside and in this case I anticipated some pullback in that upside down chart it was more than I thought but not that much more all the parameters are the same it says be a little careful here we're, we're coming into a rather overbought section in price a little oversold in the technicals okay enough with that now here's something I wanted to show you the dollar now in my CD introducing the Chapman wave methodology I, I put in a bunch of a real big bunch of, of cartoons that I'd drawn before way back back in the 19 after the 1987 crash, I did these things. In fact, immediately, and I sent them to the Globe, and the Globe loved them. They didn't want to do it because I wanted it as a cartoon series, and I ended up putting them elsewhere. So uh, here's the cartoon that says, and this was written from my history of the dollar going back to the 1970s because the dollar's <laughs> always going down. They had this one big move to 120 in the index uh, before it plunged into the 1993 or five. Uh, low. Anyway, it says, how deep did you go? This is a guy swimming, uh, for those of you who can't see it, uh, the, the husband and wife. And she says to him, he's down in the water and he's come up with a snorkel and everything. She says, how deep did you go? I couldn't even see you. He says, I sang so low, the only thing down there was the dollar. All right, folks, we've got a break coming up. I want to talk about the euro. I want to talk about other things. I also want to take your calls. 877-927-6648. There's a chunk to talk about. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kay Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I'm just going to show this for a moment. This is the December futures. Futures uh, went from a low around about 14, 12, 14, I'll tell you now, 14, 14, 14 point 50 back uh, on the 11th of September. Um, in the uh, at twelve thirty midnight, and has gone all the way to today's high. I've got this so far. I'm conservatively calling it a leg F up um, uh, at ten thirty this morning, and this looks like it could be a peak F if there's no new high bar. And the hundred twenty minute, uh, the ten minute chart has made a. Uh, what I call a single leg A up to the upside. So unless the, the futures can go over 1465, they're at 1462 right now. My guess is they could be pulling back, maybe test 1457 to 1454. Uh, uh, if by the end of the day they go under 1453, it says, you know, be careful over the weekend. Anything could happen, it could be a, a bit of a pullback. I've also got a number of uh, indicators just on a short term basis saying just be a bit careful. I want to get rid of this now, so let me just save it. I'm, I'm going to show you something that I, I think um, is quite stark. Um, I'd shown it before. It's worth looking at it now. And here we go. Close. And I'm going to go to this chart right here. Here it comes up. And now this to me is, we had looked at it a while back. It's the UUP. This is the Power Shares Dollar US Bull. And remember what I said? It's gone all the way from 20.84 
and then a retest at 20.87, the Chapman wave, that methodology, that was called a retest. Then it went to A, B, C, D, E, and an F, peak F at 23.14, underneath the 23.52 high way back in 2010. It couldn't even get there with a full A to B to C to D. I, I mean, that is not good news. And I say that that is wheel spinning because my guess was that the Fed, I don't know who, who would be doing it in the which department was doing it, but they wanted a low dollar. That's what it seemed to me. And that it was wheel spinning, that there was internal strength in the dollar, but it wasn't showing up because it was on quicksand. Well, look at this. The pattern that I always look at is the cup formation. If you break a third to a half below the, the, the right side lip, uh, and the pullback, there's a real good chance you're going to test the low, and the low in this case is 21.74, 21.77, the lows um, in April, uh, February to April, and in fact the low today is 21.57. So if you undercut that, you can go even lower. You could have a bounce, you try to get a bounce just to go back into the cup to say, hey, bye everybody, I'm going down. But look at the, the gold, the GLD. These, these two charts are really important. I put them together, and I like to see them together. This is the weekly charts, and the GLD, the S&P Spider Gold Fund, trades at one-tenth the price of spot gold, is at 172.93. One, Seventy-two nineteen is the high so far. One seventy-four is the level to break. If it closes under one seventy-four, it's made a full cup formation, and it's into the area that says that whole area going towards the one eighty-five eighty-five high is in play. But we're looking more at a rectangle formation that says so far it is the move to the upside, and the the support now will be probably on the GLD somewhere around one sixty-three. I'm talking about a weekly chart on a worst-case basis, 164 to 163 so far. I say 167 to 164. So I wanted to show that chart. Now here's the other chart. Look at this. This is the TYX, the 30-year the T-bond yield, the 10-year the T T-note yield, the TNX, that's yellow. So white, uh, white, 30, yellow or golden is... Um, uh, the 10, and the cyan or light blue, the FVX, five-year T-note, is the bottom one. Well, just as we're talking, the um, the 10-year has made leg B, the 30-year earlier on made leg B, and the five-year has not yet gotten close. So we've got 30.69, 3.69%. The low was 2.4%. Hey, that's a big move. But it's not a big move in the whole context of where we've been, but so far, that is... That's what's putting money will start to come out of bonds and into stocks if this continues. Now, the question is, will we go to a leg C and a leg D? The way I'm looking at it right now, that double bottom that failed and we've come back again and broken over the left side high in the, in the, in the weekly chart, says to me that the TLT, now I can go to these charts here, yeah, that the T, I was asked about the TY, the IYT, which is a transport, so I'll be there in a moment. The TLT has broken, broke yesterday the left side support in the daily. It broke under the 200 uh, period moving average of 120.62. It bounced above it, and today it plunged under it at 118.84 today. 118.05 is, is the low. It's going to try to retest us to say goodbye to its little friends in that arch formation, and then probably come back down. Where does that put the TBT? That puts it in leg D. Oh, oh brand new leg A. Up. This is an amazing thing that's happened in such a short period of time. I'll be back, 877-927-6648. Love to take your calls. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. 
Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides Provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation Location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney Financial Advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, First Vice President and Certified Financial Planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are back. I just want to tell you, I was asked if, uh, about the Euro, EURUSD, the Euro dollar currency pair uh, with a white background here, yeah, just so that folks can see it a little bit better. Um, what's happened is it's made a cup formation. Everything about the Euro says that it wants to test the area of 1.328, which is the previous high back on the 1st of May, that's the daily chart. When I'm looking at this on a monthly basis, I don't even want to think about the monthly yet because the monthly still says, uh, this is just a bounce, that's all it is. Hey, bounces can be very good if you're in the right position. And what it says here is that the area in the weekly chart that is most important at this particular point is 1.34, that's the 200-period exponential moving average. I've just made it a given it a couple of spots so you can recognize it. It's broken the downtrend line. You know, I, these downtrend lines to me are just points of interest. They're in the channel. Once you break out of it, I'm done. I just get rid of them as quickly as possible. They've done their job. They just, it just looks messy. Okay, what's better here is to put in, like the dollar had that big cup formation, which I'll show you in a minute again. I want to go to the euro as having uh, the arch formation, so the euro has a cup formation. And that cup formation says, like the daily was indicating, that the first level of importance will be 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1.32, 1
and 1.34 is the 200 period exponential moving average. Where does that take you to? Well, it takes you towards the previous high uh, and the, the, of the 1.328 area. Break that, and then the next candle will be 1.3385. So you can see we're lining up to bump into a lot of resistance in that area. Fabulous takeoff so far uh, on the weekly basis. Monthly doesn't really count at this point. I, I, I haven't even had a turn. Uh, cross positive in the MACD, but it is trying to turn up. Now, the the, the dollar weekly in the um, index is the dollar index. The 88.71 high back in June of 2010 goes all the way down to 72.70, rallies up to the most recent high. I should have printed that in 83.83, uh, the week of the 13th of July. And this is a very quick move to the downside. Now, remember, when we're looking chart patterns, I always say the left side can match the right side, whether it's an arch or a, or a cup formation. It doesn't matter. The most important thing about it is that you want to look at the price points, and that's what I like to do in my method of the left side, right side, and this dashed line here, the inside track. These are really important indicators. So the dollar is test, just tested exactly the 79.51 uh, area of... Um, of May, the week of May, the f fourth of this week, uh, of this year, and 78.60 actually is, is the low, so it hasn't broken it yet, hasn't touched it. If it takes that out, then we're really looking at 78.22 to 78.10, the lows of February. So let's get out of that, and let me just quickly go to Apple, because I had a question about Apple. Now, Apple, as far as I was concerned yesterday, the technicals, as you can see, the technicals were very weak. I had every reason to consider that it was a peak F top. If that was a peak F top, then I have to do something else, and I'm going to explain something now. This is one of the t methodologies that I use. When you're looking at Apple, there is a technique that I love to use, and I believe that the technique is now applicable. First of all, there's the down, uh, the, the, the falling X formation. I'm just going to get rid of that now because it's done its job. It projected up and it did, it did go to the 683.29 level. But then there's another technique that I use, and that's called Chapman Wave Flat Base Restart. I don't want to talk about all the details of the technique now because it's really something I need to go through uh, live. I want to see your eyes. I want to know that you actually understand it. It has the same principle and concept of uh, as the... Uh, the Chapman Wave uh, instant restart. I'm just typing in something here. And this, this chart says that there's another technique that I just need to be aware of. I don't have to do anything about it. And all it says is the price action in Apple, and it includes yesterday's big jump, even though Apple was actually pulling back when we were talking yesterday. Doesn't matter. Up is up. I'm not going to argue with that. Says that there's a pattern I talk about, which is called the Chapman Wave Flat Base Restart, and that says that Apple could make, this is now A, B, this could really be leg C to the upside. That says there could be a pullback, and then one more high, and then be careful because for whatever reason, nobody really will know, but because the technicals are still, the stochastic says 61% of the MACD hasn't yet crossed positive. If Apple at any point in the next three trading sessions, takes out the high of Friday, 685.50, that's just 10 points lower. If it takes it out, be careful, there could be a sudden slide towards the doji candle of the 12th, which is a low of 656 round number, and there could be a test of 648 over the next week or two, and then it bounces back into, the, into that arch formation. Why? When would this break that kind of pattern? If, for whatever reason, Apple's able to break into the 715 area, it's a 695 right now, up 12, and hold. That'll say, you know, it's just too far, that pattern's not going to work. But all it does is it says, be careful. The fact that it went up and it kept bouncing and trying to get back to the starting point of this move of 648.11, says this whole area of 655 to 640 is kind of a magnet area. And it's going to, uh, the pole has to be turned so that the magnet reverses and it, it, it propels the price further instead of bringing it in. That's Apple. Now the Qs, one, two, three.
The cues themselves, uh, this, I've got this, I'm calling this now, uh, it almost has the same pattern there, but I'm calling it leg C. That says it cannot get a leg D until at least, at minimum, leg D starts on Tuesday if Monday's a down day. We've got Joe in Boston. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good. How are you, Basil? Very well. Thank you. Good. Hey, can you look at INVN for me? Yes, it's looking very good. This is Invencense. When I... I actually had notated this. I lost the notation. I had notated this because, boy, this is one of those names. Invencense. Invencense. Inc. What do they do? Software? They make the um, the motion sensor chips for the, the tablets and the phones so that when you, know, you kind of move the phone around. Oh, and kinda, I remember. So, yeah. I remember reading that motion sense, so I remember reading that in IBD. Right. Um, and I remember saying, hey, there's another one that does image uh, which is doing very well, and I'll have to find it. I wrote it down somewhere, which is doing imaging, which also has a little bit of a weird name. So this, you see, the reason why I like the stock, you've just picked it up, Stochastic gave a perfect buy signal. It went under the 20% level, and within a few bars went over the 20% level. There was a beautiful candle. Folks, INVN is trading at 13.21, up 90 cents. The candle on the 6th of... Uh, of September hit 11.64, and then the very next day, as the stochastic turned up, it gave a very good reading because the candle that we're looking at with the long wick, kind of like a dragonfly, the candle, I love to see a break above it with a close above it, which is exactly what happened, which said, did you, you've bought this already? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm in the You bought it yesterday? Yeah. No, I was yeah. in it from, I was in, I've been in it for a while, but. Oh, so you, you sat through a little bumpy ride there. Yeah. Okay. But it looks, you know, I, I think this thing, you know, it has. I think this has the potential to go back to the highs. Well, folks, we're talking about an IPO which came out um, in in November. Had a, it opened at eight thirty, had a low of eight twenty five, a high of eleven sixty eight. It sprang, it ran up to doubled, it went to twenty two thirty five in March, and then it pulled back all the way down to nine oh six. I like it. I like it very much, and I'll tell you what I would do with this. I would try my best. The stock's going to tell you, but the 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 the, the portion that you've got now, I would try to keep that if it. If this doesn't break 12.50, now let's make it 12.48. If it doesn't break 12.48 in the next three days or so, but instead goes to the the um, 200 period simple moving average of 13. Is that? No, I must double check that. Can't be 200 period. It hasn't been trading for that. Yeah, it is. Uh, the 200 period moving average of 13.54. If it goes towards there, mm -hmm. I would try to keep this as a core position. Yep. And I would probably say you can add a trading position when it makes peak B and pulls back. So if that pullback isn't too deep, if it stops somewhere around 1285, 12, somewhere around 1288, well, yep. it, depends where, it depends where it stops right. the leg. Yep. But in other words, if it pulls back a third of the distance of this candle, I would say, you know what, you can have a trading position there. Try to keep your core for only right. one reason. Although it had a horrible pullback, I love the fact that as an IPO, it didn't make a new low on the, right. on the pullback. Right. To me, that's always a great sign. You know, Facebook made the new low. Right. Other right. stocks like a WWW, um, yeah. how many Ws have I got? Um, when, it, when it pulled back the first time after its IPO, I don't know if I can get yeah. it. No, I can't. What about, what about, what about Zillow? Look at that stick there. Uh, I, I love, I, I've, I've missed Zillow a number Zillow of times. Zillow looks it's, like it's going a lot higher. Well, let, let me explain what we're looking at. I, I get differing reports from real estate agents. Some of them <laughs> don't look at it at all, and some of them use it. And, and, and a lot of people in real estate who aren't agents use it a great deal. I happen to like Zillow. I use it a lot wherever I'm driving. I look at prices. Yep. I think it's... I think it's model. I think everything about it tells me that this is a niche area that they've grabbed. There could be competition, but I think they own this particular section right now, right. folks. Zillow Inc. Z is the symbol. Online real estate data. It really. You can. I have it on my iPhone. Uh, on my uh, uh, my Droid. I don't yeah, know if you it's, have it's the, a great app. The app. It, it really it's good. a great really. app. You drive around. You can just hold it up, and it tells you what's for sale, what the prices were, a whole bunch of stuff. So I like it. Now, the big thing is, you see, the, if you're looking at my chart, Zillow Weekly, 
made a high of 44.23 at a peak D top. Now, folks, if you want to know about the chap wave, I don't know how many times in every session <laughs> Joe and I have been through this. We're looking at uh, peak Ds. So from 21- I try to give 20... you good ones, Basil. I try to find ones that you're really going to like. Okay, well, from the low of December the 11th at uh, 22, 21, 22, it makes a peak A at 12 uh, on the 9th, the week of the 9th, pulls back, holds the low. It only goes to 21, 41, and then powers line. It goes to B, leg C, and then it opens at around number 39, closes around number 39. Uh, uh, when was it? Oh, I, I can't find it right now. Anyway, it goes to a leg D uh, on, the, on the week of the 11th, of May with a 41 round number close. There it is. And it opens at 39. It heads up to say, be careful. What it does is it pulls back. By rule of thumb, if it breaks the round number and closes above it, be careful because it says the upside could work. And it went to a 44 round number low, a uh, high, below the 44.23. And now it's broken back. So it grabs that previous peak. And now I'm calling it leg E, just as a continuation pattern. But I'm actually thinking it's more like a leg B in the weekly. Now, the most important thing that I'm liking about this is that that horrible candle that it had from the IPO is just very diligently working at this. I hate when they spike back up, but they only right. go halfway and they pull. This is like, like Zillow itself. It's a very methodical platform, and it's got there's a there's, I think that they think, I think that they have worked their plan out. In a, very, in a very specific way, which seems to be coinciding with what we're looking at uh, in the chart. And it says, this is a steady mover. Don't expect anything fantastic just yet, but it's just a steady mover. Well, it's, so it's, I, it's, it's that Basil, it has a huge short interest, so that could really, you know, fire it up. Really? It's so, it's so young and huge. it has a huge short interest. Yeah. Okay, I forgot to check that out. Well, that, that's at least... I only go with that because what happened... You know, I don't believe in not shorting stocks with a huge short interest. I've seen... Stocks with huge short interest just collapse. The thing about it is that they spring back so quickly. Right. So that happened with my Joseph A. Bank. In the moment we were short from 51.14 right. uh, or, or something like that, it went all the way down to uh, 30. Yeah, 39s, 20%, more than a 20% gain. And then it powered back up when they gave a, a hint of good news. And so we made two points instead of the, the, the big chunk, 11, 10, 11 points. But that's what happens with the short interest. So it's when you take your profits. So what this is saying to me, good, it's a support, it's just one cushion. The, the rising cup formation is another one that's good support because it says on a worst-case basis, the 36 uh, 3650 to the 35 area should be very strong support. But the best case is that this is leg D. If it pulls back and it only pulls back, wow, to about 4290, maybe to 4251, and then starts up again, that could be the leg that takes out the high of this week. In so, so yeah, I like it, but I, I, I'm not sure this is one that you've got to say, whoa, there's a double coming up. It could be. But at this point, I would just go stepping stone by stepping stone, and that's what the chart is saying. It's a stair-step way of looking at each higher peak, and I like that. Hey, yeah, good I, picks. I, I think the INV ends a better shot at a double. I, I, you think what? I think the first one is a better shot at a double. I, I, think, you're, I think you're right um, for, for two reasons. One is they're in an area that if they are specifically targeting – what is in vogue right now, right. then they have the momentum. Hey, great it. calls. Thank have you. A have a great weekend. weekend. All right, bye. Thanks. That show we looked at, INVN, is up 94 cents at 13.26. And then we looked at Zillow. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, 877-927-6648. And don't forget our Tiger Dollars. I'll talk about those Tiger Dollars when we get back. So this is the last, the last couple of days. I'll be right back. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG. 
for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. I'm Basil Chapman. I'm just showing this chart right now so you can see it. I've shown it many times before. I showed the outstanding channels, just a basic tool that I love to teach how you use channels. Look, this is the S&P monthly chart. It goes back to, actually, it goes back way before, but I'm just showing it here from 19, the low of 1994 at 435 up to the March high of 2000 at 1552, down to the 768 low of uh, October of 2002, straight up to the 1576 high of October of 2007, down to the low of March of um, uh, 2009, 666, and look at that beautiful up channel. And I couldn't believe it. I've shown it so many times. I said, I can't believe the chart in the left side, right side, price time match. This says that at very best, if this pattern works, there could be a high in the October time frame in, towards the 1576 high. I can't believe it, I said, but the most important thing is it's holding, nothing wrong with the chart pattern. So remember, chart patterns repeat over and over. And you remember my trend gauge, the Dow was up uh, 100 and something a while ago, it's only up 38. Oh, I love that gauge. Now let's go to our next caller. We have got Ari in Arcadia. Hi, Ari, how are you? Hi, 
I'm pretty well, Basil. Um, you know, I've been tra trading silver wheat. And, Correct. And when we first spoke, I said I was going to do it on a weekly basis, being aggressive right. at the time. I'm changing philosophies. I'm aggressively going to consider it on a monthly basis now. Okay, folks, let's just go through this. We've got a limited time. And Ari's had a fabulous move here. He bought a uh, uh, silver wheat way back at the lows, and now it's trading at 39.30. SLW up 30, up one point to 39.29. The pattern that I was, Ari likes in the Chapman Wave, what you like to do is you go, like to go from the daily to the weekly. If the weekly improves enough to help the monthly, then you're looking at the big, the tide is probably changing. Well, what's happened here is that silver wheat is in leg D up in the, in the weekly. But it's about to retest the old high of 40.36 back in March of 2012. At the same time as the daily is making a potential, I say potential because it's really hard to say there could be an instant restart, leg F. And that corresponds to the daily, which is in A, B, C. Maybe one will pop up to go. And then you've got to be a little bit careful. That could happen at the opening of Monday. But the monthly chart is broken out. Ari, I'm going to make it real easy. I want you to focus on this, but you see that in the monthly, the, the, the monthly MACD is still far away. The fast-moving average is still far away from the, the slow-moving average. That's a positive until it gets really close. When it gets close, it could deflect lower. I love your thinking, and what I'm going to say to you is the positions that you have, if you can keep your core position, Think of it as a core position that you don't have to worry about yet because until it breaks on the downside, 31, well, 32.77 is the 9 pre moving average, it's doing fabulously on the monthly, but I haven't yet got the confirmation yet that it's going to go all the way to 47.60, the previous, the all-time high. But on the, on the weekly chart, it's fabulous. On a daily basis, it might pull back. So 36.63 to about 35 $35. That's going to be the area of consolidation when it does consolidate. I love your thinking. I consider that you should keep your core, the trading position. I, this is where you can just do a little homework and see if you want to lighten up. But if you do lighten up, probably you want to be putting it back on round about between 3670 and 3530, somewhere around there. Hope that helps you. Sure does. Thank you very much. Congratulations on a fabulous trade. Folks, just before we sign off, um, um, my service is the opening call. You've got your Tiger Dollars. If you want to just try it out, and this is just a perfect time. You For Tiger Dollars, you can get, you spend 500, you get 600. You spend 800, you get 1,000. You get a whole, you get 20, 25, and 30%. It's the last couple of days. That's number one. Number two, I'm putting up together a Master Trader Series. The Chapman Wave works with all the other techniques. It's just a fabulous technique that you can add other things to. I want you to consider it. Have a fabulous weekend. And uh, just, hey, wait, stay tuned for Nico Dawn, stay tuned for all the shows. We have great shows coming up. Thanks for being a Basil Chapman signing off. <laughs>